to a special edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on Pioneer Life Part 1. I'm your host, Frankie Slauson, and uh, with me at this time, another guy that I'm proud to say that I can uh, do an interview with, none other than the uh, another legendary professor wrestler, I guess. You could say uh, Hall of Famer as well, uh, none other than the legendary Jimmy Boogie Woogie Man Valiant. Thank you very much, Frankie. God bless you, brother, and uh, it's my honor to be on your show, man. I hear good things about you and your show, and uh, I appreciate you having me on, Frankie. Hey, no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised I was able to get you. Uh, uh, Michael Strider was the guy that uh, told me about you, and, uh, which I'll be doing an interview with him uh, on my show here soon, uh, probably tomorrow. Well, this is uh, supposed to be here on Tuesday. I uh, will be doing an interview with him uh, on Tuesday as well, so... Yeah, he's a great guy. You know, uh, Michael, uh, he's our uh, staff uh, uh, photographer here at BWC. I have a uh, wrestling camp Hall of Fame museum here in Shawsville, Virginia. And, uh, of course, uh, he, he's on our staff. He takes all the pictures, you know, for uh, uh, my museum and, and for, for the wrestling camp itself. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Frankie, you know, uh, I want to invite you and all the listeners, you know, uh, to come out any Sunday. We're open 52 Sundays a year from uh, 12 noon to 4 o'clock. And uh, uh, we, we, we're here uh, 52 Sundays a year. The good thing about this is something that I give back to the wrestling fans is there's no charge once you get here. Once you get here, any Sunday, uh, you can come be up, be my guest and spend the day with us. Watch the kids train. We have matches, and also you can uh, enjoy the Hall of Fame Museum while you're here. So uh, this is something here in Shawsville, Virginia. Look up JimmyValiant.com. There's a map how to get there. It explains all about the uh, uh, Boogie's Wrestling Camp Hall of Fame Museum in Shawsville, Virginia. Okay, that sounds good. And I was going to, later on uh, in the interview, I was going to ask you a, a question or two about the uh, wrestling camp and whatnot. Great. But uh, anyway, uh, let me ex just explain a little bit, first of all, why I wanted to interview you. Or, or I've been doing a, uh, I just recently started up a, uh, a radio, uh, well, I've been doing this radio gig for quite a while on Pioneer 90. And uh, I, I wanted to do something different. I, uh, the first guy I got a chance to interview was none other than the, uh, well, you know, Greg Valentine, the Hammer. They were, they were up uh, for the, uh, what's it called? They, uh, we had a, because I also worked for the uh, Seven Clans Casino here in Thief River Falls, and uh, they had a little wrestling promotion going on with uh, Greg Valentine, X-Pac, Geno Andon, and Molly Holly, and a few other, uh, well, up-and-coming stars, so to speak, I guess I can say. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I was able to have the opportunity to interview Greg and whatnot, and that was a, a thrill. That started out something so beautiful, and, and now having uh, be, uh, being able to have access and whatnot to uh, do interviews with uh, other celebrities like yourself and, and Michael Strider, and, and who knows from there. Greg, you know, Greg is a great guy. You know, I, I of course, uh, uh, knew and, and wrestled with his father. And, uh, uh, of course, Greg, uh, uh, he came in just a few years later. I started wrestling in 1964, and uh, I wrestled to 2004. And uh, I had 10,000 matches, uh, uh, Frankie, and uh, <laughs> I drove 4 million miles on U.S. highways getting oh, to these matches. And, uh, and uh, of course, my autobiography just came out, yep. you know. And it's called, Woo, Mercy Daddy, Welcome to My World, the Jimmy Valiant Story, a WWE Hall of Famer, yeah. and written by myself and my lovely wife, Angel. And, of course, I, I, you know, I explain and I talk about Greg the Hammer and his father and, yeah. uh, and all the stars, you know, within the last uh, 50 years, five decades, you know, sure, I sure. talk about them all. Well, and, and uh, I want to ask, probably ask you a question about that here later on in, in, in the interview with your book and whatnot. Okay, so now that I've explained why I want to interview you, now I, I want you, uh, you know, you kind of did it already, but uh, explain uh, growing up, basically, and then uh, how you got started in pro wrestling. Exactly. Okay, Frankie, um, of course, all this is in my autobiography, Woo Mercy Daddy, uh, but uh, I started out uh, uh, at, at a uh, health club. Uh, I was a manager, and I was like okay. 22 years old, 21 years old, and uh, and uh, the owner of this health club uh, was one of the original uh, uh, Volkov brothers. Uh, and I'm not talking about the Nikolai Volkov uh, if in the 70s and the 80s. These guys was uh, Boris and Nikolai Volkov. Uh, they were the Russian brothers, and they were hot and wrestled in the, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Oh, yeah. So yep. 
Mm -hmm. They were before that. So uh, this was all in Calumet City, Illinois, right uh, out, uh, outskirts of uh, Chicago, Illinois. And uh, so uh, he was an old-time wrestler, and uh, and I managed his club for me. He says, Jimmy, you know you're 21, you're, you're young, you're good-looking, you got a good body, you got nice hair. He's telling me everything that I have, you know. He says, you should get into this, you know. And, uh, of course, he's my boss, Frankie, you okay. know, and... Uh, and uh, he trained me, he broke me in. He's, it's like if your boss says, hey, you know you should do this, you should do that, he's going to train me while I'm on the clock, while I'm working for him. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. so I went with it, and, uh, man, hey, once I started wrestling, you know, I took to it like a, a duck taking the water, and uh, <laughs> I, I never had another job, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I wrestled for over 40 years, and now uh, I just want to be a goodwill ambassador for professional wrestling, and uh, anything yeah. that I can do to, uh, you know, uh, get out there and prove the sport or talk about the sport or do anything for the sport, you know, uh, man, I'm there. That's why I, I uh, came here to Shawsville, Virginia with my wife, Angel, and we opened uh, a boogie land here. We have <laughs> a complete comp, uh, uh, and it, it's uh, uh, two acres. Uh, and, and what we do, we, we uh, offer all this back to the people that uh, this, this business has been so good to me, you know. Oh, yeah. We make dreams come true here for the students. I've already lived my dream out. Now it's their <laughs> turn. Well, cool. I mean, that, that's great to uh, uh, being able to be successful in the wrestling career and whatnot, and uh, being a Hall of Famer and and whatever. And uh, you know, it, it goes to show that uh, you know if you if you believe in what you're doing, good things can come out of that. You better believe it, Frankie. You know, and uh, you know, it, 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 you, you hit it right on the head there. You believe what you're doing, and if you got a good product, and if you do that, then you know, if you're a salesman, and if you got a product, and if you act, actually use that product, and you believe in it, man, it's simple. It's easy to, to sell, you know. And uh, yes, hey, you know, I, I want to do anything I can uh, for anybody, and uh, uh, you know, in, including yourself, yeah. and, and uh, uh, for anything to do with professional wrestler man wrestling uh, man i want to be part of it oh cool i mean that that's that that proves to me anyway and i hope it proves to all the radio listeners out here at pioneer 90 uh, that you are very dedicated and you deserve to be uh you you deserve to be in the hall of fame and you deserve to to uh be able to open up this camp and and uh, have fun with it and, and open up boogie land and whatnot Thank you very much. You know, uh, this is our 15th year here oh, at the geez. BWC Hall of Fame Museum, and uh, uh, September the 10th, in fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, what we're doing is giving uh, uh, Michael uh, a honorary degree, uh, uh, you know, for, for, uh, of this, uh, and because he's been on our staff, he's, he's our photographer, so yeah. we're going to give him a honorary degree, uh, the diploma, and his name's going to be on the banner of the BWC class of 206, and uh, so uh, he's been part of our family for years anyway, but now uh, this year he's getting his honorary degree from BWC. Okay, well that's cool. It would be nice to tell him about that, or let him, or you know, since I'll be chatting with him uh, here. Yes. Uh, yes, he, he knows all about it. He's yeah. got it down in his book, and he's uh, so tickled and uh, honored, and, and we're honored to have him. Oh, cool. That's great. Okay, next question. Uh, uh, this has to do with, of course, your early years of the wrestling. Actually, before you uh, started out wrestling, I, I, I did a little research on it because I'll be honest, I don't really know a whole lot about you, but I have followed wrestling for over 15 years and whatnot. And uh, anyway, uh, I do know that uh, you were trained by Hall of Famer Vern uh, when you started. Uh, what was it like being trained by him? Well, I really wasn't trained by him. I, okay. I worked for him. No, I went in real young. I worked for him. Uh, Dick the Bruiser was my mentor. Uh, okay. I talk again all about my whole life story and how everything came and 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 uh, came to happen in in my book, The Woo Mercy Daddy. Uh, and and um, uh, I went in uh, in 19. Um, uh, I started wrestling in 1964. I went into with Vern in 65, 66, 67, you know, yep. just as a young kid. He did help train me, but actually uh, not in his wrestling camp. Okay. You know? No, no. But uh, Dick the Bruiser and, and of course, uh, the Volkoffs, uh, they yep. were my first mentors. Uh, uh, Louis Martinez uh, was a mentor to me, you know, I talk about. Vern Gagne, he did help me, you know, okay. but he wasn't, uh, I, I didn't actually train at his camp. Or anything. Okay. Well, then uh, I guess I, I got false information. I went to a website and it said what it said, and mm -hmm. that's, you know, I tell yes, you. Sir. But a anyway, uh, okay, then if you were. But, but I mean, he was there in early part of okay, my career. Okay, cool, you know. cool. 
Yeah. Uh, well, then uh, explain what it was like being trained by the Volkoff and Dick the Bruiser. Well, it was great. Um, uh, of course, uh, I started out uh, uh, right there in Calumet City, uh, and, and uh, uh, I trained right there at the health club. Uh, and, and uh, of course, they got me my first match. They sent me down to Indianapolis for, with the WWA, which was uh, Dick the Bruiser and Wilbur Snyder's organization. And, and uh, of course, uh, he sent me from there uh, up to uh, AWA, uh, Vern Gagne, yeah. you know, and I would go in and, and work some of it for here. Uh, uh, Bruiser, then he sent me in for the Sheik, you know, the original Sheik in yeah. Detroit, you know, and uh, uh, big time wrestling. And uh, uh, from there, uh, 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 Bruiser sent me into uh, Sam Mushnick in St. Louis. So um, being uh, right around uh, that area, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Minneapolis was 400 miles from there. Uh, um, it, uh, St. Louis was 300. Um, uh, Detroit was uh, uh, like 250, you know, 300. Okay. And so I had a lot of good uh, big-time wrestling promotions going on. So I, I was really, really fortunate to uh, be um, at that time. And, and see, see, at that time, the only way to get in was to uh, have another wrestler take you under their wing and, and, and push you along and... and uh, you know, even then, uh, Fred, uh, uh, the Frankie, you know, if, if you were, were a wise guy or you thought you knew it all or, yeah. or didn't play, you know, uh, uh, you know, you had to uh, keep your nose clean or, or brother, they, you know, you couldn't get in. It was such a close yeah. knit, you know, uh, organization. It was all family, man. And, uh, and uh, I was very fortunate that, that, that they took me in and uh, they, they, you know, uh, showed me and tutored me and, and took me under their wings and, uh, um, you know, from there, uh, you know, uh, my, my career was launched. Okay. Well, that's cool. I mean, uh, they're, they're the ones that kind of helped you got, get get you on your feet, so to speak. You and, better uh, believe it, yes. And uh, what got you into wrestling and, and uh, being asked about wrestling, because that's a lot of questions I'm going to be asking about. Uh, this one I just thought of from my top of my head. Uh, what got you started in wrestling? What, what got you interested in it? Well, I started wrestling, you know, as a young boy, you know, uh, just uh, grappling, you know, uh, yeah. like anybody else uh, in the backyard, you know, and uh, I threw uh, mattresses and, and or, or mats down in my basement, and I wrestled with the neighbor kid, you know, and I wish I'd talk about my autobiography, and, and the kid was uh, about three years older than me, and, and um, I learned, you know, how to take him and, and handle him, you know, in a few months, and then there was a, another younger boy, you know, a, a, a few years younger than I was, so he joined us, you know, and, okay. and, and before long, I was taking both of them on, you know, and it, it was just, um, I, I loved the grapple, you know, I loved it, I loved the whole deal about it, I loved uh, playing football, and I loved the body contact, and uh, of course, wrestling is a body contact yeah, sport, yeah. man, you know, and so uh, uh, it, it just all fit in, and then, of course, just uh, uh, just in my early 20s, man, you know, uh, uh, being broke into pro, you know, pro wrestling, and, uh, uh, you know, it was it was me, you know, it, it was uh, something that um, uh, I wanted to make money with my body, I worked out, I trained my body, you know, uh, from a young boy, you know, which I, I, I explained everything in my autobiography, yeah. and and uh, then to, to be able to do that, frankly, uh, Frankie, you know, it was such a um, a, a quest uh, for me. Once I once I found a professional wrestling, uh, uh, man, I didn't ever <laughs> look back. I just kept going straight up. And uh, man, it's been the greatest life of, of uh, anybody could have. Uh, uh, you know, uh, especially myself. Uh, I don't know nothing I, that I would have uh, enjoyed doing more. Okay. Uh, now uh, with wrestling, what not, not now? Find out how much you were in interested in it. Uh, you start when you started wrestling, and this is something else I looked up to. Uh, you started calling yourself Big Jimmy Valen, okay? And so, how did you go from ha that to Handsome Jimmy, and then finally to the well-known Boogie Woogie Man? Okay, well, uh, I started out. Uh, my first name, uh, uh, which was the Volkov gave me, was uh, Jimmy Valentine. So I wrestled Jimmy Valentine for for uh, Dick okay. the Bruiser because that's how he. I first went in uh, in 1964, Jimmy Valentine, and and uh, uh, when I went when when he sent me up to uh, uh, the the Sheik, uh, he changed my name to uh, uh, Big John Valen okay. and the Sheik, and then when I went into Minneapolis, Vern uh, changed it to Jimmy the Body Valen, and then I went into uh, St. Louis. And they call me Jimmy the Body Valley. Well, then uh, in 1969, I went into uh, D uh, Detroit. I mean, uh, um, 
uh, with Chris Von Erich from uh, Dallas, Texas, and I went in to, as as uh, Jimmy the Body Valen, and Jack <coughs> Valentine was yep. there at the time, and he says, uh, we're going to have to change your name because uh, uh, Jimmy Valen is, is uh, too close to Johnny Valentine, and I don't want to uh, mix it up. So he looks at me, and he says, your name is Handsome Jimmy Valiant. So he's the one that gave me my name. And uh, uh, Chris Von Eric, and uh, so uh, I went with that man, and then uh, I stayed there like three months, and uh, uh, they sent me to New York for Vince McMahon, WWF, and uh, um, of course this was 1970, and, and I went in as, as Handsome Jimmy Valiant, and uh, the, the name, uh, you know, I got my big break there, you know, that was 36 years ago, 1970. And um, so, so uh, Jimmy Valiant stuck, you know, uh, yeah. from then on. And then in 1980, I looked around, and I'm handsome Jimmy Valiant. I look around, and, uh, man, there's everybody that's pretty. Uh, there's, uh, 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 of course, uh, Rick Flair. There's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Nature Boy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, Buddy Landale. There's uh, all types of uh, pretty boy blondes, you know, strutting around nice yep. bodies. And, and I've already done that for 20 years, you know. So I says, you know, I'm going to have to reinvent myself. So uh, I, uh, uh, Ole Anderson that was had the book there in, in uh, Crockett, Corporation in 1980, early 80s, and um, so uh, we switched the whole thing around. And uh, uh, I used to go into Memphis uh, with with the Jarrets, and uh, I was a character in there, you know. Uh, and 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 I, you know, and, and uh, they wanted that character to come out in the, in the Mid Atlantic, and and uh, they said, "Can you grow a beard?" And I says, "Yes." So I threw my razor away and grew a big beard. You know, I said, what, what, what's people not doing, Frankie, out here? I, I want to be different, you know. And I said, well, there's a lot of people got beards. A lot of the wrestlers got beards, but no one's got long beards. You know, a couple, you know, they got the bear man, the wolf man, you know. Yeah. But, but nobody else, you know. So I, I grew a real long beard, and I said, what else can I do different? I can come out to music. Nobody was coming out to music. The first time I came out to music was in Madison Square Garden in 1970. Uh, that was 10 years earlier, uh, from 1980, when I, when I became the Boogie Woogie Man. Okay. And, and uh, 1970, um, uh, 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 Ernie, Ernie Roth, the, the Grand Wizard, was my manager, and me and Beautiful Bobby, not, not uh, uh, Beautiful Bobby Eaton, uh, this okay. is the original Beautiful Bobby, Beautiful Bobby Harmon. We came out to the first time to Madison Square Garden to music. And then uh, when I went in the late 70s to Memphis for, with Lawler, I started out, came out to music. I, I had my own record. I came out to music. And, and now in the early 80s, I'm coming out to music as a boogie woogie man. And it got over because nobody was coming out to music. See? So you so. could basically say that maybe you're the guy that kind of started out the, uh, the entrance uh, theme kind of, well, uh, because nowadays everybody in wrestling everybody. has uh, yes. A theme song, you know. You know, you know I, I, what I would do now, you know, because uh, when I was the first to come out to music in in uh, in, in uh, Mid Atlantic for Crockett's, and yep. and soon as I started doing music, the boogie woogie man started getting over, you know, and I'd okay. come out dancing and I'd kiss people and guys, <laughs> girls, grandma, grandpas, kids, you know, everybody. I'd kiss it, the green, black, blue people, <laughs> and I'd kiss everybody, you know. Nobody was doing that. Okay. Me. So, so that was different, see, and uh, and nobody was coming out to music. So the boogie woogie man got over strong and real fast, you know, and uh, and exactly, and and then a uh, 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 Flair seen it, and Dusty Rhodes seen it, and everybody. So they started come out to music, and everybody was impressed, basically. Exactly. So I go offer. back. Exactly. I go back to Memphis, and then now all of a sudden uh, it's getting over. So now Lawler's coming out to music, you know, and Dundee's coming yep. out, and. And, uh, you know, every Boston Idol and Tommy Rich, everybody's coming out to music there. So what I would do now, Frankie, if, if I was still on top and still, uh, you know, yep. in, in the limelight, uh, because everybody from the first match up, everybody comes out to music, what I would do now is come out to no music. Okay. See? Because it'd be different, see? Huh. you got to be a little different to, you know, stand out and, and, and get get noticed and and, uh, and and take it all away, see? So so that's what I would do now. Okay. Well, that is, that is, uh, that's kind of how you and I kind of like in a way because, uh, you know, I want to do things different on my radio show, you know. There and, you go. And, and, you know, be different from everybody else. And what I do, you know, and, and uh, I, you probably never listened to me on the air before, but, uh, I do a variety show, and what I'm trying to do is not just pick one topic, pick them all, basically, sure. 
and go go with that. And that's where these interview series kind of got started or whatnot. And, well, see, I mean, you know, you're doing this. You, you know, you're doing Greg Valentine, you yeah. know, professional wrestler. You're doing Jimmy Valiant, professional wrestler. You're doing, you know, Michael, Michael Strader. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> a photographer. And, and, and soon you, to be. Sure, you know, it's, it's great. That's good. Good for you. Friend. And soon, Ned Beatty. If you, I'm sure you have you ever heard of Ned Beatty? Ned sure. Beatty before? Yeah. Sure. He's, is, is that the movie actor? Yeah, he's the uh, guy. Well, uh, he's actually staying. Uh, uh, 40 miles from where I live right now in a place called Carlson, Minnesota, and soon I hope to be doing an interview with him. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, uh, he, he was in the movie Nashville. Yep. And uh, uh, th th this is so funny. <laughs> and I'll show you what kind of small world this is. Okay. Uh, uh, in the movie Nashville, there was a hippie on a three-wheeler that they made specially for the movie. Okay. And uh, he was in the, the, the traffic jam that goes around the 265 around Nashville. And uh, he was cutting in and out of cars and doing all kinds <laughs> of stuff. And he was a real bad machine. It, 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 it was, had a, uh, um, a Volkswagen engine in it. had big race slicks on it and a real long front end, you know, the uh, the, the, uh, the, the front end uh, sure. fork, you know. And, uh, and so w when, when they made it specially for the movie in Nashville, because they filmed it in Nashville, Okay. And, and he was the, one of the big stars in it. And, then, and um, so, so uh, it, it, when they uh, when they finished uh, the movie, uh, they sold it to uh, a a, a dealership, a, 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 Merc a Lincoln uh, dealership there okay. in, in Hendersonville. So Jerry Jarrett had seen it, and and he says, "Handsome man, you have got to have this, you know, because I was real hot there in, in Memphis in 1980." And yeah. uh, so uh, they brought that thing down to me, and I bought it, you know, yeah. from uh, from them. And I drove it for for years, you know. And uh, I have it here in my museum now, huh. you know. And uh, it's a funny story, but yeah. uh, that, that's how that's how that. That is very. That is very. I funny. talk about that in the book too. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is that is very unique. How uh, how mm -hmm. ironic for me to ask, ask Ned about that scene. About I, I think the, I will. I think I'll, I'll write that down. Yeah, uh, yeah. In in the movie Nashville, where the hippie was driving this uh, this uh, real long front end uh, 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 forked uh, uh, with the big slicks on it, it was a um, uh, a three uh, a three wheeler. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. Exactly right. That's <laughs> mm -hmm. well. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I tell you, man. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now back to your interview. Back to talking about you uh, and, and your wrestling career. Uh, I talked. You know, when I asked Greg Valentine, I asked him. You know, uh, uh, any favorite matches? You know that he had. And now I'm going to ask you the same thing. What are your, some of your favorite moments or matches in your legendary career? Okay, you know, well, 10,000 matches, so uh, I'll tell you <laughs> something. R really, Frankie, you know, I was very fortunate to work with all the, the world champions, you know, yeah. uh, from NWA, you know, of course, uh, Harley Race and, and, and uh, Dusty Rhodes, uh, 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 Briscoe Brothers, uh, the Funk Brothers, you know, Dory and Terry, yeah. uh, they all were world champions, all wrestled all of them, uh, 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 Rick Flair, you know, uh, <laughs> and WWF, you know, uh, okay, yeah. Bruno San Martino, and uh, Bob Backlund and uh, Pedro Morales and, uh, uh, you, you know, WWA world champion, uh, you know, Dick the Bruiser and uh, AWA champion, uh, uh, Vern Gagne. And uh, so, so I was fortunate to wrestle. I, I wrestled Lou Fez, you know, oh, yeah, not, yeah. Not, not not for his belt while he was champ, but I wrestled him, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, Gene Kaniski, you know, uh, I, I was so fortunate to be around and, and to have that type of caliber uh, pro wrestlers uh, uh, in my in uh, my 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 era, you know, yeah. and I wrestled them all, you know. So uh, really, man, every match, every match, you know, uh, uh, every night, you know, we'd wrestle seven seven uh, days a week in the '80s uh, for Crockett's. Well, we, I would wrestle actually wrestle nine times a week. We'd wrestle uh, uh, once a w once a day, that's seven days, and then yeah. on Saturday twice, and Sunday twice. We had a double shot, so so uh, uh, you know, my goodness, uh, I, I had ten thousand matches, and uh, hey, they were all good, you know. Okay. Really, I can't. I had the feuds uh, with Ivan Koloff that that yeah. this, it was just uh, phenomenal, you know. Uh, I, I had feuds with Jerry Lawler that uh, you know they, they okay. still talk about in Memphis, and. Um, I had a feud with uh, Paul Jones and his army, you know, yep. 
uh, for, lasted five years in the in the in the eighties. You know the boogie woogie. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, so so uh, in, in his army he had uh, uh, superstar Billy Graham. You know he had uh, Abdullah the Butcher. He had uh, um, uh, Big the Barbarian. You know yeah. uh, he had Shaska Watley. He had uh, um, uh, uh, Baron von Rosky. You know he had all these in his army. And and uh, he, uh, you know uh, my goodness he just, he just <laughs> sent him uh, night after night. You know I'd wrestle. One or all of them, you know, uh, during the week. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, well, yeah, with 10,000 matches, I'm sure uh, you've had many, many great memories anyway. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to ask you is that we were talking about earlier. Uh, back in 1992, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think that's when you started the uh, Boogie Woogie uh, Wrestling Camp. Yes. And uh, whose idea was that, and how has it been going? It's been going great, and uh, actually, um, it was myself and my wife, uh, Angel's uh, idea. Uh, I always had that back in my mind, uh, Frankie, because everybody uh, asked, you know, how do you get in this uh, professional wrestling? Yeah. How do you do this? How do you do that? And, and you know, uh, I said to myself, when I finish, when I retire, I'm going to uh, build a camp, you know, and train these kids and uh you know, make their dream come true, you know, like yep. mine has, you know, and uh, uh, so, so uh, I really, uh, when I, um, uh, in 1989, uh, uh, when, when, when Turner bought uh, Krakus out, you know, yeah, it, it was yeah, really no, November, yeah. November, I think, in 1988, and, and uh, uh, my, my contract was up, and uh, uh, I went then from uh, independently, and, and uh, I came here, and uh, uh, we, we found a little uh, two-acre, uh, uh, you know, a plot here, and it was an old farmhouse on it, and we, we redid the farmhouse. I put a fence completely around it, so it's a compound, and, and there's nobody can get in, uh, you know, unless one of the main gates are open, you know, yeah. and on Sunday, the uh, main gates open from 12 to 4, and people come from all over the country, all over the world, really, we've had them. <laughs> You know, come and um, they know, and it's just jamming here, man. You know, it's so quiet because we're out in the country, we're out in the valley. You know, mountains all around <laughs> us. There's farms. There's a dairy farm a half a mile down, and it's just beautiful. It's, 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 it's uh, right across the uh, Roanoke River. It's the most beautiful place you ever seen, and and uh, it's so quiet here. You know, uh, all week and uh, well, Sunday, man, it's jamming from 12 noon to 4 o'clock. <laughs> there's cars parked everywhere, and uh, man, it, you know that ring is. is being worked over and okay. then um, the people just come and enjoy. Um, but but we did this together. It's something we built and we've been here 15 years now. And uh, um, you know, again, I want to invite anybody, please, if you ever want to come and enjoy a day and meet me in person and uh, spend the day with us, watch the kids train. We have matches here. And, and what we do is drill from 12 to uh, 2, two hours. We drill, we take a break, and we come back with matches. And uh, also, uh, you can enjoy the Museum Hall of Fame. You can see the three-wheeler here, you know, <laughs> in, the, in the automobile uh, sure, uh, museum. Sure. Yes. But uh, the good thing about this is there's no charge. That, that you, you know, you don't buy a ticket to come to tour yep. to uh, uh, the museum or Hall of Fame or see the matches, nothing. There's no charge. Come in, spend a day with us, and this is what I give back, uh, something that I give back to the wrestling fans. Well, cool. That, that, that is great. Uh Check it out, uh, uh, Frankie. Uh, tell the people. Oh, yeah. JimmyValiant.com, please. And uh, everything's there. You know, I mean, hey, you can pick up a book if you like, you know, okay. and uh, that would help out, of course. And, and uh, But uh, uh, anything else, man, is it, it, all free. Oh, I tell you this. Maybe after we get done with the interview, after I uh, get off the air, maybe we'll, uh, maybe you can uh, hold on for a second. I'll give you my address. You can send me some information about it or something like that. Sure. Okay. Be great. Be great. Okay. But until then... Uh, now, uh, talking about wrestlers and whatnot, and then even wrestlers of today, have there, since you've been open for over 15 years, uh, or now 15 years, I should say, right. uh, are there, have there any, been any big name wrestlers that have came from the camp that might be on WWE programming? Yeah, well, yeah, what we do, uh, uh, all these kids uh, have had tryouts, not all these kids, but yeah. I've had many kids, you know, uh, had tryouts with WWE, WWF, uh, uh, yeah. you know, when they were, I take them down, in fact, uh, I just took three kids down uh, three weeks ago, we went into Memphis, uh, 
they had a legend uh, uh, with Jerry Lawler and, and okay. uh, the, yes, Bill Dundee and everything. We had a two-day legend thing. One was in Jackson, Tennessee, and the other thing was, the next day was in South Haven, Mississippi, which which is just over the line. And and I took uh, three of my kids, you know, from camp here, and uh, they all uh, got to work and got to try out and uh, you know work in front of a, a sold-out crowd and to meet all the legends. Jackie Fargo was <laughs> there, and uh, uh, you know all of the the, the, the Memphis legends, you know, yeah. and because uh, years ago it was all regional before the cable, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. took over worldwide, and uh, 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 you know Sputnik Monroe was there, man, and you know all the legends, and I, I was so pleased that my kids. And uh, oh man, and Lawler, he was uh, of course he's still wrestling, and, yep. and he was in the Battle Royal, and all my <laughs> kids got to tie up with him, man, and uh, oh they just loved it, you know. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I have many kids that uh, come, you know, when when uh, when when I went to uh, uh, in 1996 uh, um, November, I, I was inducted in the WWE yep. Hall of Fame, and uh, uh, you know Vince said, you know, hey, just uh, keep keep your school, we're turning out these good. Uh, you know prospects and uh, and uh, yeah, I send them up and, and they do different stuff for them and and um, what what they what the WWE have they have their own uh, uh, of course uh, uh, school yeah, the, uh, you Ohio know, Valley so, Wrestling or whatever I believe exactly it exactly yeah mm -hmm. so 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 uh, uh, you know but but everything here I, there's two different companies that spun off of BWC uh, up here with me you know there's New Age Wrestling okay. and uh, uh, Bruisers Wrestling Federation so my kids they work. Every week, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the trade, and of course, uh, uh, it's just like anything else. You know, they got to have a a, a full time job. And they come here, train on Sunday, yeah. and then of course Friday and Saturday they wrestle, and uh, they, they, they do that. They're doing uh, what just like WWE boys doing, okay. you know, only on a smaller scale, sure. but they are professional wrestlers. Okay, well that's cool. I mean, for 15 years I've been able to do that and whatnot, and and uh, that, that's that's. Uh, that's a heck of a lot of people, and I'm sure you've had hundreds upon thousands of people that you've had trained and whatnot, and and uh, more in the future, I suppose. You better believe it. Yes, sir, Frankie. Okay, and now that you know, you were talking about your book, and now I'm probably going to ask you about your book. Uh, right. You wrote a book, and now how does it feel to now to have your entire life, or bits and pieces of it, or whatever you put out? I, I never got a chance to read it yet, but I'm sure you'll come out my way here soon. Uh, have your entire life on paper for others to read and enjoy. What it's great. It's great. You know, uh, it's 566 pages. <laughs> Holy a big book, uh, hardback. You know, okay. it weighs three pounds, man. You <laughs> know, uh, you could work out with it. If you get two of them, you could do curls. You know, and uh, sure. do some uh, yeah bench presses with them. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's called Woo Mercy Daddy. Welcome to my world, the Jimmy Valiant story. WWE Hall of Famer, written by Jimmy Valiant with Angel and. Uh, uh, the, the difference is, uh, you know, I had the same deal that Dusty Rhodes had, uh, that uh, uh, superstar Billy had. Uh, I, I, that, well, not not Billy, because he went eventually with WWE. Yeah. They, they promoted his. But uh, with uh, um, uh, uh, Terry Funk, uh, uh, with uh, Harley Race, all these yeah. guys, uh, they did their own uh, 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 book deal themselves. Well, I had the same deal that they had. Uh, you know, I could have had the same deal. Okay. But instead, uh, Angel and myself, we wrote every word ourselves. Um, uh, you know, were, were, were Jerry Lawler and, and Dusty and all these guys. They wrote uh, their it's their story, their autobiography with some other uh, uh, person, which is a professional writer. Okay. Well, you know, these writers, they stay with the, the boys, you know, a couple weeks, you know, yeah. and then they go back to New York or to California or wherever, and then they uh, sit in their office and they write the book, you know. Uh, they, they tape record the, or they, they yeah. do this or that. But, and now they, they email them a couple times. They may call them a few times, but when the book comes out, then it's, it's their story. It's the star's story, but it's in that writer's form is it's in his rhythm it's in his words in other words you know sure, sure. And, and here not one word in my book 566 pages uh is is um i okayed every single word because it was written by jimmy valiant with angel me and my angel wrote this book uh, <laughs> and frankie and it took us five years you know yep. and uh so it's great, you know, it starts out at birth, you know, and goes all the way yeah, until yeah. I, I go into my last match. And 
uh, explains everything about uh, uh, you know all all it make you cry or make you laugh. You know it yep. it, it does yeah it does so many. I tell so all, all kinds of road stories. You know and uh, it's just a, a, a great great read for wrestling fans and and for other people. You know because yeah. I tell uh, I tell stories. You know and uh, I, I give messages to the young kids. You know don't do this don't do that. You know yeah. like I have. You know yeah. I abuse yeah. my body. You know I'm, I I did this I did that and the reason that I tell all this on myself, you know, is that if I can help one person, one human being, one one little girl, one little boy, you yep. know, one man, one woman, then my life and this book, my book, Will Mercy Daddy, will not be in vain. That's right. And uh, uh, even uh, with your book, uh, I even asked Greg uh, when I interviewed him that uh, even he's uh, working on a book. He's working on it right now. He hasn't been out finished yet, but he's... Right. Uh, Workout. Did you ever have a chance to wrestle with him at all? Oh yes, yes. Oh, many times, and I talk about it in here. I talk a lot about Greg and his father, and, and uh, yeah, I was in, of course, New York. I trained, teamed up with him uh, when I came into uh, uh, Mid Atlantic uh, before the Boogie Woogie Man. When I came in as Handsome Jimmy, and and uh, they they uh, changed me for a short time as, uh, to uh, King James. I talk about it, and uh, they came me and the Hammer up together, and and there, and we went against the. Uh, 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 Ebony Diamond, which was the the, the Rocky Johnson yeah. and, and uh, uh, the Rock Father, and uh, a bad Leroy Brown. So uh, we we uh, teamed up against them guys. Had a great summer run, man. You know, in all the summer clubs and uh, did tr terrific business with them. And uh, and then I was in New York with them. Uh, you know, a couple yeah. different times when he we wrestled WWF. Yeah, we're going to wrestle Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, now back to to this. Uh, Will there ever be a Jimmy Valiant DVD out? Uh, yeah, I have two. Uh, I have two now, you know, uh, okay. uh, volume one, volume two. And uh, uh, anybody go to jimmyvalliant.com and, and go to the souvenir list. And uh, uh, I have two DVDs. I got a CD. I'm singing uh, <laughs> uh, uh, three songs on the CD. And uh, then my uh, theme music uh, that came out, The Boy from New York City. Yeah. and is on there and, and other theme music that came out too and uh, of course Angel uh, uh, my lovely wife she's singing seven uh, or eight of songs on that oh. so uh, it's a CD and uh, uh, we have t-shirts hats uh, you know uh, uh, bumper stickers man you know we have everything you know uh, on the if you want a souvenir you know everything so, a person would ever want basically you better believe it yes sir for uh, I, I'll be honest. I have a. I don't have a DVD of you, but I have. I did recently. Uh, wait, about a while back, I went to Grand Forks and uh, North Dakota and uh, went to the Walmart over there and. Uh, uh, and yes, it was in the cheap, you know, DVD bin, whatever, what have you. But uh, I, I bought a copy of uh, uh, Superstars: The Early Years or whatnot, and you're on a. Uh, I forgot what the match was, uh, who you faced, but you're you're actually on a compilation disc that I own. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, good, I figured good. I'd just tell you that for my lousy two cents, I guess. That's be. good, 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 thank you. Great. Good, okay. Good. And let's see, uh, now that on from the, the DVD on to this, uh, now that you, you said you were inducted in 1996, in November 96, was this, uh, I think this was the day prior to the 96 Survivor Series? Is that I right? It, yes, yes, it sure was. This was like in New York or whatever? Yeah. Yes, yes, uh huh. And uh, they flew me and Angel in, and my daughters came in from Chicago, and, uh, it was just a, a great time. I talk about this also in my book. And, uh, uh, of course, Vincent, you know, he, yeah. when he puts on a, a shindig, man, he goes first yeah. class. He was just like his father, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, you know, his, his father, Vince Sr., you know. I, I worked. I went to New York three different times, you know, and stayed over a year each time. I went in 1970, 1974, 1978. Sure. And uh, so, so I was the original Valiant, you know, Jimmy Valiant, and we uh, made Johnny Valiant. Yeah. I had some Jimmy and the luscious Johnny, yep. you know, and then uh, a gentleman Jerry came in, you know, later. And, uh, uh, of course, the Captain Lou Urbano was a, a manager <laughs> and, and uh, a great, the Grand Wizard manager. Yeah. At, at the, yeah. as a handsome Jimmy and uh, yep. uh, it was just a great run and uh, uh, of course the Gorilla Monsoon I lived there twice in, yep. uh, in Willingboro and uh, uh, Gorilla mm -hmm. Monsoon is from Willingboro right okay. there and uh, uh, when uh, Angel and myself we had to come back we couldn't uh, stay for the Sunday um, 
uh, matches and everything yeah. because the BWC, I always had to come back for a camp, and I didn't want to disappoint the, the, the boys, the kids, you know. Yeah. So so uh, we flew out early that next morning, but my daughters, they went home, in fact, with uh, uh, Gorilla and uh, his lovely wife, Maureen, and uh, they stayed another two or three days, and then they flew out of Philly. Um, Willingboro is real close to Philadelphia, and, and, and uh, so he took them home from... Uh, after the uh, uh, ceremony and, and uh, the induction of WWE Hall of Fame mm -hmm. ceremony. And um, so they stayed another three days and visited, of course, with them. And, and uh, my, my daughters, they all uh, uh, was raised there, you know, a, a couple years of their life, you know. They still had friends in, in school, and then so uh, they, they, they enjoyed that time. Okay, well, cool. I mean, that, uh, how, how did you feel after being inducted? Oh, it was great. You know, it, it was uh, probably the greatest honor. You know, uh, of course, uh, uh, you can get. You know, I mean, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, uh, uh, this is what you work for, and uh, to to be in. Uh, in uh, you to know, I've got many, yeah. many uh, uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, uh, uh, inductions. Um, you know, I was the youngest uh, uh, for Bob Luce in the Chicago Amphitheater. You know. Yeah. Uh, to be inducted in, uh, into their uh, uh, amphitheater. Uh, I was in uh, the St. Louis, um, uh, you know, he had, uh, uh, Sam Mushnick uh, had a uh, NWA uh, induction there in, in, his, in his office. Uh, uh, my picture was up in their little Hall of Fame deal, and uh, uh, of course uh, in Houston, Texas, uh, also, you know. Uh, so, so I, and now I, I independently, you know, I've been in quite a few, but of course uh, the main, uh, the main deal in the whole world is WWE, yeah, and uh, yeah. you know, to be in that is it, just uh, thrilling, you know. And uh, I have the plaque here in the museum for everybody okay. to see, and. Uh, uh, so, so once you get here at uh, Boogie's Wrestling Camp Hall of Fame Museum, uh, you look for it and, and you'll see it. Okay. Uh, 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 next question I have for you is uh, going back to your earlier career, as we're kind of switching guns a little bit, going from here to there. Uh, explain how uh, life was like on the road. Yeah, well, you, you know, it was rough. You know, uh, you're, you're away from. Uh, uh, your families, uh, uh, you know, you 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 uh, you, you always work, uh, um, uh, Frankie uh, holidays. You yeah. know, I, man, I've never had a Christmas day at home. You know, yeah. uh, in probably forty years. You know, uh, when we went with Crockett's in the eighties. Uh, we would wrestle twice uh, on Christmas Day. We'd do an afternoon show in Greenville, South Carolina, and then come that night, Christmas night, in, in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and, and wrestle there. So I'd wrestle twice there. And, uh, um, and so you're always away, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, you can't go to your, your yeah. children's, uh, it's tough, you know, can't go to your children's school functions, and you miss their birthdays, you miss their all kinds of stuff, yeah. you know, and uh, it, it's a really rough life. Uh, uh, for that, you know, and uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, really uh, uh, puts uh, puts a, 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 a you know damper on on your marriage and different sure, things, sure, you know. Sure. And, uh, yes, sir, brother. But um, hey, it's just one of them things. And I, I talk about this, you know, uh, in my book, you know, and uh, the hardship that the boys go through. And uh, you know, we were troopers, you know. Uh, uh, no matter what, uh, the show had to go on. We, we wrestled hurt, you know. If you you had a broke uh, uh, a finger or something, man, we just uh, put like a, a stick on it and tape it up and <laughs> tape it to a good finger and go on, you know. And yeah. uh, we'd set it ourselves uh, most of the times, you know. Uh, uh, we'd get busted open and uh, wouldn't even get sewed up. We'd butterfly each other, you mm -hmm. know, and, and just keep on going. And, uh, uh, man, uh, you know, driving uh, five, six, seven, a hundred miles uh, of one way, wrestle and get in the car and go another 500 miles for the next day and then another 600 and then another two three four hundred you know and uh, you know week after week yeah. you know and uh, uh, seven days a week and uh, you know it just takes a toll on your body and your mind and uh, but uh, hey you know we were all troopers you know yeah. and uh, we always showed up you know uh, uh, even if you're hurt uh, you know uh, you, 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 you know you got cracked ribs man you know you just tape them up and go you know uh, uh, we never thought about missing a shot, you know. If you, if you miss, you wouldn't get paid, you know. Yeah, you got to pay the bills. You got to pay your, you, you know, spend. Uh, you have to uh, support your family. So uh, uh, we just went with it, man. And, and uh, uh, it was the last of the troopers, man. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, this is probably way back before even. Uh, well, I don't know. What did they start doing flights? I mean, like 
allowed wrestlers to be on airplanes and all that. Well, well, you know, we, we would fly, you know, uh, yeah. to certain places like St. Louis, uh, uh, you know, where, where the, he, he, uh, uh, Sam would fly uh, us all in. But uh, in the 80s, um, uh, we flew a lot. We flew a lot. Uh, um, and and uh, Crockett uh, would, would uh, in fact, he owned uh, two or three planes, and, and he'd rent planes, charter planes for us. And, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, it was uh, a lot better. But, but uh, still, it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, a toll on your on your body, and and, sure. and you still got to go every night. You know, yeah. or you, you still miss out on all the activities at home. You know, but uh, yeah, we would fly. We we started flying a lot in the eighties. Okay, and uh, now going back to your career as well, uh, you've been managed by many different uh, people, um, many different managers, and, and who was your all-time favorite? Oh man, geez, I, uh, Bobby Heenan managed me. You know, uh, I love him, man. You kind know, of uh, you go there. Uh, oh yes, uh, uh, and then of course uh, you know uh, Grand Wizard, yep. and then uh, of course uh, Captain Lou Urbano, and uh, uh, in between that, you know, I had some uh, great managers, you know, and uh, uh, just um, man, I, I don't know, they they, they were all great, you know. Yep. Uh, uh, honestly, um, they're all different characters, all different, you know, I talk about them all, you yeah. know, I tell stories about all of them, and, and in fact, I mention them all, I, I name them all, all my managers, and uh, it, it's just, uh, it, it was just a great ride, my man. Sure, and uh, it, it would be a, a thrill of mine also to get ever get a chance to interview like Bobby Heenan, I think he'd be a cool person to have an interview. I, I really don't know how to get in contact with him, but I'm sure maybe you have a, a way of uh, making that happen or whatnot. But anyway, uh, uh, now uh, we talked about Michael Strider, who the who uh, later on uh, viewers will hear my interview with him. Uh, what, uh, and you talked about him, but uh, what's your like? How did how did this all start? What's what's the connection? Well, Michael, um, um, uh, you know, contacted me, uh, and, and uh, he wanted to do a and uh, he writes for different papers yeah. and different, uh, uh, you know, uh, publications. And uh, uh, he came and took some pictures, and he did the story on, on myself and uh, up-and-coming uh, legend show sure. uh, here in the area. And uh, my goodness, man, once I met the kid, I mean, I fell in love with him. He's such a great guy, you know, and so talented, you know. And and uh, so uh, that's me, you know, once... Once, man, just like you, you Frankie, man, you know, I, 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 I just met you, just talked to you the first time right yeah. now, you know, but I consider you, you're sharp, you're a good guy, man, you're doing something that you love, you know, and hey, I consider you my friend, you know, and sure. uh, please call on me anytime, you, uh, I, I'll be willing to do anything you want to help you or anybody, you know, uh, uh, you're very sincere, and, and this is how Michael is, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, he's just a great, great guy, and, uh, um, uh, it, it just uh, something, you know, he, he did a movie, you know, he, he got his hands in so many different things. Uh, he came here and shot a, a, a movie, you know, okay. and, uh, yeah, and he wanted me in the movie, and I agreed to it, and in fact, we shot it on location here at BWC yeah. at my part, you know, yeah. and uh, I played myself as Jimmy Valiant, you yeah. know, the pro wrestler that ran my school, and, and um, so they, 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 uh, um, uh, of course, read that into the uh, to the movie, and uh, so it, it, it asked them about that. And, sure, uh, I, it's, mm-hmm, it's I a would never do that. Okay. Uh, is, is that a movie that's uh, out now, or uh, what? What he's doing uh, is, is uh, still uh, being uh, uh, edited and put together, yeah. and uh, they're going to take it. Their, their plans is take it to the uh, uh, film festival uh, okay. uh, this fall, coming fall, and. Uh, and uh, you know, I hope the good luck for him, for yeah. him because uh, I really enjoyed doing it, and, and uh, I know he, he, you know, he brought the whole crew out, and uh, and it was pretty neat, man. It was a pretty neat deal. And uh, what uh, what's the name of that film? For um, something like. Um, Jesus, uh, hundred uh, hundred thousand, so many stuff about minutes. Okay, it, it's a real neat, it's a real neat thing. Uh, it's it's um, uh, it's it, it's minutes. I know. Uh, okay, ten thousand or no, hundred thousand and and or something. And okay, it says minutes. That's sure. the name of the film. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, cool. Uh, and uh, uh, well, we're almost uh. Well, I got about another ten minutes here to, to uh, interview you, but I, I want to say I appreciate the fact that you uh, let me uh, do this, and uh, 
like I said, if you can help me out uh, by getting in contact with other wrestlers or people that you know that would say, hey, you know, this is kid on the radio in Northwest of Minnesota yes, that uh, is doing interviews to people. Would you mind doing that or whatever? You know, sure. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, well, to. You got my email address, so you know how to get in contact with yes, me. Yes, sir, and you got mine, and yes, please will. keep in contact. And uh, I want to thank you so much uh, for this, brother. And, sure. Uh, Brother, I just want to tell all the people, man. Woo, Messi! Woogie, woogie, man, I feel good. I tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare. Don't you dare miss this one. The greatest show happening today. Frankie, Frankie show. Woo, Messi! Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, and uh, uh, last but not least, I have a couple more questions for you before we run out of time. Uh, and, then, uh, and I will have you do a station ID for me. I appreciate you doing that a little early, but I'll have you do that again, if you will. Sure. Uh, anyway, uh, the next question I had for you, uh, what do you think of wrestling now compared to wrestling back in your day? Well, you know, it, it changes every, uh, uh, it seemed like 10 years, Frankie, you know. Uh, uh, like in the 60s, you know, uh, you could get the people, uh, man, just stand up and cheer and uh, uh, as simple as uh, just uh, coming off uh, the rope with a big forearm smash, you know, yeah. because there was so much wrestling. Then It was, you know, the name of the game is wrestling, so we did so much more mat wrestling. And yeah. we'd, we'd get holes, you know, and hold them holes, and, and, and the guy would try to get out and counter, and, and uh, you know, and we'd tell the story, you know, and then in the 80s, you know, uh, it, it started and getting uh, 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 more spectacular moves like uh, a standing suplex, sure. but just one, you know. Yep. Then that'd be the finish. I, I can picture uh, visualizing seeing uh, um, Harley Race holding uh, Jack Briscoe up in that standing suplex, you know, for it seems like, uh, uh, man, it seems like three or four minutes, you know, it's probably just 30 seconds, but then, man, boom, coming down all in one mm -hmm. time, and uh, oh, it was just, man, it, people would just come right out of their seats, you know, yeah. and then, of course, the 80s, they started coming off the top ropes, yeah. and, and, you know, the 90s, man, they started getting <laughs> big monsters, and, yeah. you know, it, it just changes, you know, it changes, it's you know, and, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it's good, Frankie, it's good what they're doing, uh, I mean, today, man, if, 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 if it wasn't working, if it wasn't making money yeah. for uh, Vince, you know, uh, uh, WWE, brother, believe me, trust me, they would go a different way, yeah. you know, so uh, uh, it's, all, it's, a, it's a business, it's, it's a company, it's all about money. Man. Sure, yeah, and uh, about money, but also about entertaining the fans. Exactly, you uh, bet. And, and like I said, I uh, just want to say thank you for letting me do this interview. Thank the you, uh, second interview in my interview series called Chatting with the Stars, or I should say Frankie Slauson Chat with the Stars. And, uh, oh, by the way, I understand that you uh, have a birthday coming up. Birthday, August 6th, uh, which would be next uh, Sunday. Uh, uh, I, my wife just told me that uh, <laughs> uh, it reminded me. And, yep. of course, I'll be here at BWC. And uh, if anybody want to come and uh, celebrate the handsome Jimmy's birthday, I was born 1942. So uh, this is going to make me uh, 64 years old, brother. <laughs> and, uh, hey, come by and uh, be my guest and uh, spend the day. And have a piece of uh, cake with me this Sunday at uh, uh, Boogie's Wrestling Camp, Shawsville, Virginia. Check it out, jimmyvaliant.com. The address is there. There's a map how to get there. Hey, come and celebrate uh, Boogie Woogie Man's uh, 64th birthday this Sunday. This Sunday. All right, cool. August uh, 6th. All right. And, uh, and uh, last but not least, and uh, let me... Uh, just uh, say this, uh, uh, if you could, uh, give me a station idea, this is what I, if you could say this, uh, this is the uh, legendary Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, and you're listening to the Frankie Spossum Show on Pioneer 98.1. Go ahead. Hello, Missy, this is professional wrestler Jimmy Valiant, the Boogie Woogie Man. You're listening to the Frankie Spossum Show, B yeah, or B Square, oh yeah! <laughs> well, okay, cool, I appreciate you uh, let me interview you, and... Man, uh, if you ever get a chance, and, and I know you told me if I ever get a chance to go up and see you, uh, I will definitely do it. And if you ever get a chance to come up to northwestern Minnesota, a thief of the falls, look me up if you ever have, have the chance. God bless. I will, Frankie. And, uh, you know, uh, say hello to Baron Von Roski. He's up there, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, the claw, right? You better believe it. Okay. Look him up, man. He'd be a great interviewer. And do you have anything else to say to the listeners out there? God bless everybody. Hey, and uh, hey, make your dream come true, whatever it is. I don't care if it's a, a fireman, a, 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 a doctor, a garbage man. If you want to be that, hey, you go for it. And if you want to be a professional wrestler, ballet or, or manager or referee, hey, go for it, man. Hey, be what you want to be. 
All right. Love you, Frankie. God bless you. Love you, you too, man. Thank you, Thank sir. you very much. Uh,